So what I want to talk about is um, if you're working on a project where you're doing a lot of the same embroidery, um, an efficient workflow would be to embroider them, put them aside, and then trim all the threads as you, you know, later in one batch instead of stopping and um, fix, you know, trimming the threads for each one. So um, I did a set of 12 yesterday and they're all trimmed and ready to go into the wash um, and now I've started my second 12 so I'm making a set of 24. This is 100% linen. It's white. I don't want to mark it up. I don't want to um, do anything to it that I would have to remove or cause it to be a you know some sort of mark or something I couldn't get out. So I want to show you how you can very easily place create placement marks for a design to go into the corner of a square like this without using a marking pen or chalk. And then I want to show you the stabilizer I'm using. I'm going to show you the whole process. All right, so you can see I'm using my old 2170. This machine is a workhorse. It's got to be at least 15 years old now, and it works like a charm. It's It amazes me how well it works. I'm using... Robeson and Anton um, polyester thread and it's color fast. I know it's color fast because I tested it. I embroidered one napkin and I washed it to see how it would come out and I'll show you that in a minute. But it's a really big cone and it's hard to fit on the machine itself. So I have one of these little thread stands. Okay, see it's got the little hook here. And I put the thread on the thread stand and I just have it off to the side of my machine. And that's how I'm positioning my thread when I thread it. The other thing is you want to be really careful how you wind your bobbin. This bobbin is it's like a marshmallow. You can see here, I can see how the thread looks loose on this bobbin. If you use a bobbin like this, to embroider, it's gonna cause tension issues with your machine, possibly. You wanna make sure that the thread is really firm and snug on the bobbin. See on this one how it's snug and I can't, you know, I can't push the, the individual threads around. That's what you wanna look for. So the first thing is you wanna really take care on how you wind your bobbin. Now for bobbin thread for this project, I am using this Mettler 60 weight cotton it's a really, really thin thread, and it's really nice for bobbin thread on my special projects. Um, of course, you could buy bobbin thread. Bobbin thread is a lighter weight than all-purpose thread that you can put in your bobbin. I've seen bobbin thread up to 90 weight, very, very fine. But I'm using this because this is what I have, and it's handy, and it works really well in my machine. So you want to use something extremely light in your bobbin when you're doing um, embroidery. I initially tried to use the same thread in the bobbin as I was using in my needle, and my machine did not like that, and it caused a bunch of loops and yuckiness. So I'm, I'm not gonna do that for this project, even though it's a napkin and you can see both sides. Okay, so this is the first one I did, and you can see here, it looks really nice. Um, this is what the underside looks like. And it pressed really, really nicely. I took it out of the dryer and it was just rumpled a little bit. So I'm really happy with the way this linen napkin washes. I wanted to test that because I, I was a Foff girl um, at Manchester Sewing for 10 years and I sewed exclusively on Foff. Um, and I was a Foff educator in the store and I, you know, I think um, these front load bobbins are really, really nice. You know, so the bobbins in the front of the machine, not on top of the machine. But you do need to take care for certain things. And you also have to make sure you put the bobbin in the bobbin case the right way. Um, Foff is opposite from a lot of other machines. So when you put the bobbin thread in, when you put the bobbin in the bobbin case for this machine, it turns clockwise. Okay, and most bobbins actually turn counterclockwise, so you want to make sure you put it in so it's turning clockwise, you know, and it's in a separate bobbin case like this, and then it goes into the front of the machine. If you do have this 2170 or one of these older machines and you have a newer computer, I can explain to you how to get embroidery designs from your computer to your sewing machine, so if anybody needs that help, let me know.
Here's my napkin, okay? And so what I first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at all the corners and I'm gonna find the corner that is the neatest looking corner. Um, so I think, I think, I think I like this corner. Okay, so I'm gonna choose this corner to position my design. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna fold it on the 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do this, take this side and I'm gonna fold it so it, I line up this edge right here like this. I just wanna make sure you can see what I'm doing. All right, and then I'm going to, while that's exactly even here, I'm gonna straighten it out through the center of the napkin, which is right here, okay? And I'm going to just line that all up, and I'm gonna finger press a crease in my napkin. And also, you wanna make sure you're doing it on the right side of the napkin, so you can see this is the wrong side, because I can see the hem and the stitching, okay? The right side doesn't have that. So I've got my crease there. All right, and then you can visually look at it and make sure that it's going straight from corner to the center of the napkin, okay, which it is, all right? Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little ruler and I'm gonna measure five and a half inches up from the point because that's how far I've been placing the design. We want them all to be in the same place. So I'm gonna do five and a half inches right here. Okay, so there's my guideline for that, that pin right there. Let's just check and see if I have any questions. Okay, so Diane asked a really good question. She asked if I washed the napkin before I embroidered, and the answer is no. And the reason why I'm not washing it before I embroider is because it's nice and starched, which is going to help support the embroidery on the napkin. But like I said, I only embroidered one and I tested it to see how it would look after I washed it. You always want to do a test. You don't want to embroider all 24 napkins and then throw them in the wash and realize that you didn't use the right stabilizer or, you know, it just didn't wash well. Okay, you want to make sure you test it. So I washed it after I embroidered. Um, this has a nice stiff feel to it. You can see it's kind of see it's kind of stiff, and that helps support the embroidery. So now that I've got this pin right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold up the napkin to the pin. I'm going to line up my 45 degree fold with the rest of the 45 degree fold. And I'm going to um, make a crease on this 45 degree angle. Now what I'm looking for as I create this horizontal crease is that there's the same amount of distance here and here. Okay, and then if I wanna be extra safe, I can measure from the edge here to the corner is six and a half, and it's also six and a half here. Okay, so that's what, if you wanna be extra safe and make sure that your, um, your diagonal line is correct, you can measure the distance from here to here as well. But this is a really nice way to create a um, crosshairs to line it up in your hoop without marking it with anything, because I don't want to have marks that don't wash out. Um, okay, so Janie asks, will you wash them before you give them to her? Yes, I'm going to wash them all, and the reason why I'm going to do that is um, I want to make sure that the embroidery, when you clip your threads, sometimes you may clip a tie-off and it might start to come undone. So I'm going to quality control them basically by washing them all, ironing them all, and then checking every design for, um, you know, making sure it's still complete and stitched nicely and not coming apart anywhere. If it is coming apart somewhere, I'm going to use a satin stitch on my sewing machine and I'm going to fix them. But All right, so now I've got my crosshairs and I think you can see the creases 
on the camera, see? All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna prep our hoop. And my hoop looks like a Chia Pet because um, on a lot of design, a lot of embroidery, I will use like a 505 adhesive spray. I'm really not a fan of hooping my fabric because if you hoop your fabric, you know, in between the hoops, what can happen is you can make a shine mark that doesn't come out. So I am not gonna actually hoop the fabric. What I am gonna hoop is this aqua mesh. This is OESD aqua mesh, and you can see it's see-through, and it's like a non-woven interfacing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a piece that's just wide enough to go in this hoop and this is a four by four hoop. You always wanna use the smallest hoop possible. Um, so I'm just gonna cut myself a piece that's, you know, what I need. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut off the extra that I'm not gonna need here. All right, so then I'm gonna hoop this And actually, I can hoop both of these. I'm gonna lay this piece down in the middle like this. And I'm gonna hoop both of these. I'm sort of embarrassed that my hoop is such a mess. I just wanna make sure I put it on right. There's the front. Um, I could see a future video being how to clean your hoops. Um, I use that um, like Aqua Velva shave cream works really well to take off or like Gooby Gone, you know, if I wanted to make this look nice and professional and not like a Chia Pet. Now, the thing that I'm going to be using to coordinate with um, the folded um, guidelines on my fabric is the little hatch marks on the hoop. So most hoops will have a center mark at the top and bottom and on the sides. And I have them here. You can't see them because they're covered with crap on my hoop, but I can feel them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my fabric on over my hoop like this, okay? And I'm going to feel for that, that hatch mark or the little guide on my hoop. And I worry about doing like the bottom and the side first. I can feel it. It's right there and it's right there. And then I'm gonna feel over here and it's right on. It's matching right with the, um, the fold mark. So I'm gonna take the pin out of there and I'm just gonna slide it um, right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna pin the stabilizer to the, the fabric. And then I'm gonna find the vertical one. And this one just seems to be working out nice for me. I think if you're working on a project and you're embroidering the same thing over and over again, the whole process becomes easier and easier the more that you do because you just, like I can visually see that that's amount, the amount that would stick off the bottom. So I'm just gonna take a second pin um, and I'm just gonna pin it up at the top. And I'm making sure these pins are really far away from my embroidery area, okay? You don't wanna put the pins anywhere near where it's gonna embroider. Um, so now this is ready to go. All right, so see this daylight? If anybody is light challenged, um, I highly, re highly recommend these daylights. They're a little bit pricey, um, but it has, it makes me happy to turn it on every day, I'll be completely honest. I can do this to it, I can push it away, I can lift it up, I can lift it down, and this is actually better. You can see how bright this is lighting my machine. So even though my light bulb has blown out, um, I can always see what I'm doing with my daylight. So um, these are very, very nice lights. Um, I got mine at Stitches Midwest last um, August, and. I think I'm going to get another one at some point when we can go back to doing events because I absolutely love this. But you can see it really lights up my area. So that's how I can see what I'm doing even though my light bulb is blown out. All right, so I've got my bobbin in. I've got my bobbin thread in there. Um, I've got my thread 
on my thread stand. Now I have the, I'm going to change it to this dark color. So I'm going to just get rid of this, the lighter color. So again, I'm having it off to the side so it spools off nicely. I'm just going to thread that. And I'm just making sure I get it in the tension. And then I'm going to thread my needle. So then, I'm, once I'm threaded, I'm going to just put my hoop on, and I'm going to attach it. Now, if your machine has um, a base in the hoop feature, that is like my favorite, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to use that. Um, oh, hi, Terry. Terry's sorry that she's late. It's okay, Terry. Thank you for joining us. Um, so I'm going to attach my hoop. And I'm going to press OK. You can see I, it's got the message here saying that the embroidery is finished. So I'm just going to say OK. And then I'm going to press the, you know, the, the get it going button. And you can see my needle, I don't know if you can see the hatch mark, the, the folded, the fold marks anymore. But my needle is right in the center of my crosshair. So um, I know I've got that hoop pretty well. Um, and as an added bonus, what I'm going to do on this fop, I can, oops, a minute. Um, I'm going to start over. Okay, wait. I want to do basting in the hoop. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do basting in the hoop. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to give me the outline of the design area. Um, so I'm just going to press go on that. Okay, and the benefit of having baste in the hoop is that you can see if it's straight with your, your, your crosshairs. Okay, so I'm going to baste this in the hoop. Right, and I can see that what I'm looking for at this point is I want to see that the corner of my basting is an equal distance away from the hem stitching on both sides, which it is. And it's approximately 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch away from the hem stitching. If it was a little bit off, I could go back and tweak the fit of it. I mean, I could, I could tweak the position of it a little bit, but this is spot on, so... Now I'm going to start stitching. Now, in terms of actually doing the embroidery, one thing that I have discovered that works really well for that really thin satin stitch that's outlining the, um, the B in the middle of the monogram is to have it on half speed. So I have my machine set at half speed. I'm going to start stitching it. And then I'm going to stop. When it stops, I'm going to trim um, so nothing gets caught. All right. All right. So now it's going to stitch the whole dark blue um, little side flourishes and also the, um, the outline for the B. That's what it's going to stitch now. Um, and I don't know how boring this is. I don't know if you guys want to you know, watch me embroider this whole thing. But the one thing that I will say is one of the my biggest no-nos is as you start embroidering, and you'll see this in a minute, it's going to go to the other side, and um, there's going to be a long thread going across the design um, to the other side where the flourish is. It's very tempting to go in there and clip the thread while the machine is running, do not do that. Because if something happens, like if you 
if you slip or if you're too close to the needle. I have broken my needle. I have thrown my machine out of timing by doing that. So one of my big tips is do not um, cut your threads while the machine is running. Always stop the machine. Like see, you can stop the machine, clip it, you know, get it out of the way and then start it back up because really it's not worth the risk of you know hitting the needle the needle hitting your scissors um, because I've done it so that's my one big tip for um, you know trimming threads the other thing you want to ch and check while you're embroidering is that none of your napkin or your fabric is underneath the hoop and getting embroidered to the bottom of the hoop I've done that that can present a little bit of a disaster all right so see here we have another jump so I'm gonna stop be a good girl and trim now obviously I'm not gonna stop and trim each jump as it comes only the ones that are really a pain um, Oh, so Carol says this is fascinating to watch. All right, Carol, if you say so. Another kind of stabilizer you can use is a topper. So after you stitch your first design, if the stitching is not laying nice on, on the surface of the fabric, you can use a wash away stabilizer as a topper. Okay, so for some reason on this design, these ends right here get a little blurby or a little bumped up. But the good news is the light blue of the other two initials covers this area. So I'm not worried about that per se. Um, you know, th this little thing right here where I got this extra little loop, um, I'm going to see how that washes out. And then if I need to triage it or fix it, I will. Um, Janie says, I'm glad to know about slowing down with the narrow stitches. It really made a big deal, a big difference, I mean, to have it be slower. Um, and it could also be because this is a really old machine. I know that there are fancy dancy new machines um, and there are multi needle machines and those machines go a mile a minute and do a great job. Um, so, you know, slow it down if you need to. Like I think this one needs to because it's an older machine. Um, all right, so I'm gonna just change the color Okay, so I also keep it slow for wide satin stitching and the reason why I decided to do that is because I noticed when it was on full speed I'm just gonna show you when it's on full speed the thread starts jumping off of the spool really fast and I just felt like it wasn't feeding in properly so I actually um, I'm just gonna clip this thread just so they're not in the way. Oops. Um, so actually having it go slow for wide satin stitching works out well too if your thread seems to be like jumping off of the spool really fast. I have this, I wanna show you the box. It's such a pretty box. Okay, this is the software I'm using, Premier Plus Two, um, and I actually, um, I don't know if you guys know, but I used to do a lot of my own custom embroidery and I used to do the Bernina Wearable Arts Fashion Show. Maybe one of these days I'll do a trunk show of all my embroidery. Um, that's why I was super excited to work on this actually because I got to actually do digitizing um, and I just, I love it. My friend Lindsay who watches every now and then um, is an amazing with the FAF software and she actually has lessons. I think I'll put a link to her um, lessons in the group so if anybody has the FAF Premiere software and you want to really learn how to use it, um, I highly recommend Lindsay because she's very, very talented and she's very thorough and slow and calm and you really learn a lot from her. Um, Mary says, I really slow speed when I use metallic thread. Yes, metallic thread does not like to go fast. And I'm assuming you're using a Metafill or Metallica needle um, when you use um, metallic thread. Okay, so when you're using a metallic thread, um, 
put your metallic thread on a vertical spool pin, okay, because the thread rolls off like toilet paper and it's not twisting. When you have a horizontal thread, the thread rolls off like this and it twists. So that's a tip for metallic thread. Use a Metallica needle and have a vertical spool pin so it does this. Mary just uses a regular embroidery needle on her machine. Well, Mary, you're very lucky that that works for you. If it works for you, I'm all about whatever works. So if that works for you, great. Um, is the Faf Premier the same as the Husqvarna Viking Premier? I think it is. I think Faf and Viking are the same. Um, I think it's the same. Um, and it's excellent software. I love it. Ooh, we're almost done. We're just doing the little dots on the sides of the flourishes, and it'll be all done, so I'll show you how it looks. There are a few things in this embroidery that, you know, every machine could have a hiccup. Um, if you create your own embroidery and it stitches out fine, except um, every now and then there's like a little thing that doesn't stitch exactly perfectly, if it's not in the exact same spot every time, then it's not how you digitized it. The machine can have a little hiccup. I had to go through and reorganize every little object so they would stitch out in an order that made sense. I digitized them in order, but sometimes in the software they'll get mixed up again. Um, so this is almost done. I'll be able to take it off and show it to you. The things I'm concerned about, but I'm not going to play with until after it washes. As you can see right here, there's a couple loose stitches. Like I can slide my um, the tip of my scissors through that, just right there. So I'm going to wash it and let the, si the stitches sort of sink into the fabric and set into the fabric, and then I will fix anything that needs to be fixed. There's the back of the design. Um, I'm going to clean that up and clip it, wash it, and see how it looks. So I will post pictures of my finished, you know, my finished napkins in the group so you can see how they're, they look. Um, and if you have any questions or if you're embroidering something and you have questions, please let me know. Um, next week, I promise it will be pants fitting things that I will share with you. Um, and I hope you guys have a nice weekend. I hope you guys are staying state. Sa staying safe and socially distant. Um, I know it's hard, um, but I think it, things are starting to turn a corner, which is a little bit encouraging. Um, yes, yeah, so please, you know, if you have questions, let me know. If not, I will see you next week for FabFit Friday, and, um, you know, have a really nice weekend.